Let me handle this. Officer Discotech, still wondering if we listen to disco? We don't, by the way. We don't listen to disco anymore. Her entire character has shifted. This young woman is cold as ice. Sure. Reacting to stimuli. I am not a gardener, by the way. I'm a legal counselor for the Dock Workers Union. So let's get to it. You're looking for Titus Hardy? You think he has information that will help you? Maybe he does. That's Titus. Talk to him. But know this. I'll be keeping an eye on you. No strong arming. Nothing official. The district of Martinez does not recognize your authority to make arrests. It doesn't matter if you recognize our authority. We will make an arrest if we have to. She says nothing. Her glare speaks for her. Could this be the Miss Beaufort that Easy Leo mentioned? The one Mr. Everett sent to law school? I suggest not wasting time on trivial pleasantries and focusing on why you are actually here. Titus Hardy. Even though she has excellent control over herself, something moves behind her eyes, in the way she stands, in her face. You caught her off guard. Push her some more. You are not here to chat up the legal counsel. You are here to question these men. You set the pace and the topic of these conversations here. Establish that. A man like Easy Leo could have said anything. Do not be restrained, sire. I represent the Union and these men here. Don't make this personal. A very minor victory. I suggest... Even though you caught her off guard. You are not... You said a man like Easy Leo could have said anything. Do not be restrained, sire. He said no such thing. This isn't about me. Calm down, everyone. Let's stay professional. Dirty tactics, officer. What you want is of no significance, officer. Don't test your authority. In Martinez, you are no one. I saw what you were thinking. You want to say, what are you going to do to me? Don't. Just because it's in your head doesn't mean you have to say it. Aggressive? You make your living enforcing violence. These people are just dock workers. Hmm. So you were spying on us. And now you represent murder suspects. Just dock workers. We've talked to Evar Claire. We know who these men are. The Union's militant wing. Listen, you moral intern lackeys. You're a mob enforcing the unlawful privatization of Revishal. Twenty fat men in the Occident are stealing it all. And you're their bodyguards. Fuck yeah. So ask what you came to ask, or get back to your commanders. Look, a comedian, do your job, ask your questions, then get out of Martinez. Strange. It's as if people don't believe a cop could be a socialist revolutionary. Like I already told you, I'm a legal counselor. Do you have hearing problems? Hey. Hey, you. Yes, you. Word on the street is you're ready to start building communism again. You keep saying things like, down with the bourgeoisie, eat the rich, sodomize the landowners, impel all people who have more than 25 real in their pocket, literally murder all human beings regardless of their political beliefs. That kind of stuff. Okay, 
Not in so many words, but don't deny it. You're about to rip off that mask of social democracy and reveal the monstrous seven-eyed lamb of global communism that will devour and masticate mankind. Everyone can see that. So tell me, do you have any questions before we fire up the big communism builder? Or do we get right down to it? Very well. I guess no one will build communism then. Tell the working man it's over, unless anyone has objections. No objections. It's mathematically impossible to achieve a classless society. Everyone knows this. Anyone? Anyone else? There's no one? There's no one. Okay then, lie down and let the water carry you downstream. Thorn branches scrape the glass like bony fingers. There's a little slide panel up there to let some air in. No need to open it in spring. It's still too cold outside. This is where you say you're a bit. Detective. Oh, this is about him. A real looker, that one. You sure took your time, huh? Waited for him to get real ripe and pretty for you. Oh, he was a real pretty boy. Hanging up there, letting out that pretty boy smell. I can't for the life of me understand why you did it. I mean, I would have just left him up there. You must really like cleaning up other people's shit. You might want to start asking your questions now. It's not going to get better than this. These guys are so macho, they're ready to confess to first degree murder. Ask if it was them. Do a head count first. Connect these men to the tracks you saw in the yard. Chances are they're going to match. Starting from the right. Boot size, 44. Blonde man, in his 30s. Overbearingly masculine. Sitting on his right. Standard working boots. Size, 45 or 46. Eldest in the room. Probably mid-50s. Smoker. Quiet. Across at the other table. Hobnailed working boots. Size 43. Gang tattoos. Mesk or Sarah Maritzian in his late 30s, early 40s. And then standard working boot. Steel reinforced toes. Size 46. The big dick. Wide at the shoulders and lean at the hips. Rugby cap. Fingerless gloves and numerous scars, a little under 40. The emblem on his vest says Rowan Club. A little patch below it reads T. Hardy, Captain. In the far corner, standard working boot, steel reinforced toes, size 44, 40 something, non-alcoholic beverage in hand. You squint, is that a plectrum? on his neck. Forget it. It's not important. Let's call this one the musician. Size 41, with the light step. Not a child, after all. An older man with a rat face, mean, watery eyes, and two front teeth missing. In the middle, heaving and wheezing. Big guy. Boot size 46, deep marks. Probably carried the victim over. He alone 
is 130 kilos. Add the man in armor and you could easily exceed 220. In conclusion, these seven are the actors on the crime scene. The footprints were theirs, but there's a discrepancy. Exactly. You've stood there for about four seconds, not saying anything. Hit them with questions. Where's the eighth Hardy? The fuck is with you, fella? The pretty boy. You guys really love talking about that pretty boy. Funny, but my partner and I have a serious matter to discuss with you. Evrard, and what did he tell you? That we killed him? That we took a cargo belt from the harbor, went out back, and used it to hang him? Because we did. All of us together. I hope he told the story straight. I hope he told it. Well, goddamn right, I... No, these seven honest men have equally come forth. They told you what happened so that you don't waste any more of your time. All seven together. They're diluting responsibility. It's an anti-arrest tactic. Why? Because he was worthless mercenary scum. And he stepped out of line in my town. And he stepped out of line. What kind of mercenary? The kind that shows up when you start a strike. The experienced kind, too. Had Kohoi and Semenin written all over him. ex oranis special forces. A live grenade, right here in our bar. This one has a special gripe with him coming here. I can't prove it, but I know he was sent by the Wild Pines. They hire merc shit like that. Story of every strike from here to Samara. Cause one night, he walked straight up to the mic and said, I'm Oranis, goddamn special forces, and I'm gonna fuck you all! Really? Yeah, really. Had a gin and tonic up there, sang some Oranis paratrooper song, and said he's gonna fuck everyone. We couldn't believe it either, but he fucking did, right there. Like some kind of animal. Sire, the tale is true. This is a serious violation of the karaoke code. Wrong. He harassed women, raped one, harassed workers, threatened to kill some as a warning. From rape, to harassment, to threats of violence. Why the strange de-escalation? He regrets mentioning it. Hopes you didn't notice. To kill us all, if we don't open the gates, if we don't let the scabs in, if we don't bend over and that was before he started coming here yeah he said it was his favorite joint now started to come in here every night drinking grabbing girls grab one of ours mid karaoke right there on the stage he grabbed someone yeah this girl's on the mic a beautiful girl young gets into the second verse of love a lake the fucker grabs her legs starts screaming Show me your cunt! Why don't you show me your cunt? Then, he gets knocked on the head with a wine bottle, doesn't even fall down. Aren't you fucking listening? My man is talking to you. He took care of it. They got the girl out before anything else could happen. Yeah! Me and Eugene got her out. Aren't you fucking listening? There's something odd here. Seems like they don't want to talk about that rape Titus mentioned. Why not? This is a serious allegation. Make them talk about it. No. You're not getting the name. 
That's a Martinez matter. And I'm not discussing it with you clowns. There's nothing you can do for now. He's stonewalling you. You don't have to answer any of his questions. I know, Lizzie. Relax. We killed him last Sunday night. Seemed like a good way to end the week. Known him? We don't associate with scum like that, asshole. Yeah! Who do you think we are? Quiet. He came around about three weeks ago when that Pines cow first sailed into town. Happy? By the Pines cow, you mean Joyce Messier? The representative for White Pines? The same company you're striking against? No. I mean the Pines cow. The stupid ass cow they sent in to fuck us over. But you know what? Why don't you ask her about the pretty boy? I'm sure she has interesting things to say when you ask her hard enough. That's enough insinuation for today, Titus. Officer, your interview is drawing to an end. Don't waste your last questions. He hanged him up by his neck until he got real still. Wasn't that obvious, copper? Didn't they teach you anything at the cop school, idiot? You're pretty sure you've had at least two years of cop school and many more of active service. The autopsy showed there were no ligature marks. His hands were not tied. Can you explain that? Um, we... <sighs> Look, I'm not gonna play 20 questions with you, capo. I'll say it again. We killed him. Yeah, I knocked him out. Came up behind him and clapped him in the back of the head. He went down like a sack of sun. That's right, lawman. And then we hanged the fuck. Make them a bit more uncomfortable first. Then see if it all adds up. Right fucking here. Eugene already told you that the fuck had started coming to our bar. Yeah, man, weren't you listening? My fucking elbow copper. Samar unboxing style. Samar unboxing, or Sambo, is an eloquently violent set of one-on-one -on -one fighting moves originating from a Samaran Isola. Sambo style implies stealth, cleverness, and cool. He may be lying, but he's good at it. No twitching, no rushing, no uncalled for details. Like what, copper? Are you deaf? There will be no singling anyone out. You can't arrest a hardy boy without arresting all hardy boys. Do you think you could do that? Do you think you could arrest them all? A trick question. Don't let her lead the conversation. That's for the courts in Le Jardin to decide. Not for the officer making an arrest. Which we all know you won't be. What you can do right now is go back to your station and write a report. No, no. We'll stay here and discuss what happened that night. How many people have you sent to the Chaise? Ever felt remorse for them? Chaise Electrique is the method of capital punishment in Revachon under the coalition. During the suzerain's reign, it used to be the firing squad. For send them to reunion to rot. For 20 years. For life. The River Esperance Correctional Facility, a military prison run by the coalition, dubbed Reunion by the inmates. The origin of the name is unknown. But you see, a law, lawman, is something people agree upon. And here in Martinez, we agree that this man had to die. We have. Didn't they take pretty sh the autopsy shot? Um, yeah. That's right. Make them a bit more uncomfortable first, then see if it all adds up. Titus is solid as a rock, 
and so are a few others, but... Elaine, who looks like he might be Titus's right-hand man, the least antsy of the bunch, definitely not his first time being questioned by the police. This little rat-faced fellow is solid, too. Always fidgety, yes, but no change there. Him neither. Mostly keeps to his tomato juice, or whatever he's got there. <sighs> Fuck off, copper. This one is a stone wall. You won't get more out of them about the night of the murder. Not yet. No. Of course he's having trouble breathing. Just look at how fucking fat he is. <laughs> Fuck off, Shanky. Angus is a powerful guy. All muscle. Keep your eye on this powerful guy. Sooner or later, he's going to break like a piece of twig. Like what, copper? Nothing. Your investigation here is done. Leave Martinez, go back to your stations where you belong. I think we're going to stick around, thanks. Some things don't add up here, Titus. I've done this job for long enough to know that people don't just confess to first-degree murder. Even if it is a group responsibility, we're going to look into this. Good luck with that. You've heard everything a rent-a-cop is gonna hear from us. Real law officials. You're lucky you didn't get a beaten. rent a -cop. So that's what this is about. He doesn't see you as his equals. Oh, so you went and talked to my mommy. And now she's making me play with you. Is that it, lawman? And what's gonna happen if we don't? You gonna go and tell on us? Yeah, yeah, I heard him. The fuck do you think I'm doing here? You'd have your ass handed to you if it wasn't for the boss man's word. Let me state this very clearly, Capo. <clears throat> Hello, officer. I'm Titus Hardy, and these are my boys. Hardy boys. How may we assist you? Explosive laughter follows. To his men, Titus Hardy is a golden god. They want to laugh at his jokes even before they leave his lips. This guy is a born leader. But having Everard back you up like that did seem to have some effect. What are you talking about, madman? There's no eighth hardy boy. There's seven of us and we're all here. Or what? You want to be the eighth hardy boy? We ain't hiring. Actually, boss, we've been talking and we think she could maybe... This person Glenn wants to hire. He really respects her. Shut the fuck up, Glenn! It has to be good if he won't let you pursue it. Looks like the lieutenant thinks so, too. So, let me get this straight. There is an ace hardy boy. It's a she, and you don't like us talking about her? That's right. We're not talking about this. This is a private hardy boy's matter. Nothing to do with your shit. And You're not cops here. Don't go digging around if you don't want a bullet in the back of your head. I'm watching you. Good. We are all watching each other. Officer, your question. There's no point in pushing it further, he thinks. This is already a victory. We'll learn more about this eighth hardy sooner or later. his cooking utensils and gives you a little nod. 
acknowledging your presence. He looks up at you, then looks away quickly, shrugging and muttering something to himself. Shrugging is an international sign for, no, I don't know what's behind that door. The mention of Manana gets his attention. He smiles and delivers a whole slew of unfamiliar words and lively gestures. Then he falls silent again. They're friends. The man says a couple of sentences in that strange language of his and then seems to wait for you to speak. I'm pretty sure he asked you a question. He doesn't know your language. You can just say something cool in return. Hmm. Or need more vodka? Okay, so it's vodka that keeps the men happy and in good spirits. Clever move by the Union. Vodka borscht! I love it, Bratan! Turn it the fuck up and then ask for some yourself! Turning it up seems like a dangerous idea. Honestly, the place is a powder cake. The cook gives you a long, disappointed look, then turns the stove off and seems to wait for you to speak. We're still waiting. Vigilance officer, what can this old carabineer do for you? Yes. The Debardieu's union pays me to stand vigil during the night. Not out of any political allegiance, mind you. I'm an old man. Don't sleep more than a few hours every night anyway, and... money is tight. He feels like he has to justify himself for some reason. Yes, it does. Unfortunately, I wasn't working that night. Been on a two-week leave since last Monday. It's a private matter. Nothing to do with your investigation. You see, officer, René is the kind of man would rather die than admit he needs medical assistance or, God forbid, seek it. A real man's man is just gonna ride it out. I'm fine, goddammit. Mind your own business. <laughs> no one. The bus has been on man since last Monday. There's no other guard. It's just me. No one has been guarding the container yard since last Monday? Yes. It's... It's not actually an issue. I mean... Look, officer. The container yard doesn't actually need a guardsman. Never had one before, René. Monsieur Claire had that booth built specially for him. It's mostly decorative. The possibility of someone being in there is enough to discourage any ill-minded individuals. Hevra created this job for René because he knows the Royal Carabiner's pension of honor and PTSD isn't something a man can live off. A decorated Kingsman collecting tear reflects bad on the whole neighborhood. His words. Look, officer, uh, can we conclude the topic of my guard bus now? She is nobody. This is none of your concern, and I refuse to discuss my private affairs with the RCM. The lady is Jeanne-Marie Beaulieu, and she sure as hell wasn't a nobody. Yes, yes, uh, like I said, it would be up anyway. So, might as well keep an eye out. It keeps my senses sharp. The afternoon sun shimmers off the white on blue police livery of the motor carriage. Do something important? Something murder related? There's always something important. Doesn't mean you can't take a moment to admire this piece of machinery. This is a Caprice Kanema, 
the Caprice Motor Corps follow-up to their highly successful workhorse, Caprice 40, and the answer to the Lums racing breed, Ferv series. With its air-cooled, rear-mounted 12-cylinder compression ignition engine driving the rear wheels through a four-speed manual gearbox, the Kanema is able to reach 100 kilometers per hour in 13.5 seconds and go on to a top speed of 180 kilometers an hour. Even at a standstill, the unibody Caprice Kanema looks sleek and dynamic. The cabin is tilted frontward to give it a more aggressive, hunched look. Someone has waxed it recently. Mm-hmm. You want to take a closer look? Yes. An extraordinary machine. It's nice and all, but why so modest? Put some zing into it. Flare it up. Slam it down. Helium headlights would improve the range and quality of the visual field a lot. It's a bit girly right now. Fit it with some proper off-road components. Actually, I have a pair at home. Just haven't gotten around to fitting them yet. I need to lay some wiring for the ballast first. Maybe. Yes, definitely maybe. And means no. 130. I reckon that's a 7 litre V12 there. Seven point two supercharged. Saying these words brings him immense joy. Still here, stuck in this damn jam, my man. What's up? Ah, man, me and narcotics go way back. Had some good time surfing the psychic waves of my own consciousness, you know? But those days are behind me. There are other addictions in my life now. Why the inquiry, my man? Just be straight with him. We have a credible lead, sir. Someone on this roundabout is waiting for a bell shipment from the harbor to load it on their lorry and drive it to Jamrock. Not me, man. No way. I don't need any trouble. Shit's bad enough anyway. This jam's got folks up in arms, and I'm afraid it's headed toward a conflagration. Look, man, I try to stay away from the criminal underbelly of Revachol. I'm a guest here. You really need to find another man to probe with those questions. We wouldn't say he's lying, sire. Kingdom of Conscience. The kingdom of conscience will be exactly as it is now. Moralists don't really have beliefs. Sometimes they stumble on one, like on a child's toy left on the carpet. The toy must be put away immediately and the child reprimanded. Centrism is a change, not even incremental change. It is control over yourself and the world. Exercise it. Look up at the sky, at the dark shapes of the Coalition airships hanging there. Ask yourself, is there something sinister in moralism? And then answer, no. God is in his heaven. Everything is normal on Earth. still has her eyes fixed on the photograph in her hands in the background the radio plays if you want her attention you may need to be more forceful where am i who are you the smile on her face has disappeared replaced by the weary aspect of a cornered beast Uh, never mind. I remember now. 
I'm still stuck in that traffic jam in the 50s. Back in Mefka, during the time of the revolution, the side walls and cafes are filled with young people. I was on my way to see a new Goyadeiro picture starring Gabriel Buendero. Until you came along, that is. This is Gabriel Buendero. A strikingly handsome man looks straight at you. His head crowned with a wide brim hat. His hair is dark as an oil slick, and his jaw, the most perfectly chiseled thing you've ever seen. This man's got a hold over her, even 50 years later. You can feel it. He was the biggest star of his day. Girls used to faint in the aisles of cinema whenever he came on the screen, and schoolboys used to memorize all of his lines. In all likelihood, it's a world that's only ever existed in her mind. Someone was. They are someone's memories, boy. What difference does it make if it's me or not? They are beautiful. That is all that matters. Beautiful and true. And they will win. They are coming for this, you know? All of this. She seems to derive some bitter pleasure from this strange thought, as if the past will one day wipe the present away, like a tidal wave approaching. Why not, Harife? It's not like I have anything better to do in this hellhole. There's something off about this woman. Tell her to show you the soles of her boots. Maybe she was at the hanging, somehow. Diamonds? Of course not. But wouldn't it be marvelous if I was? Whatever stupid things they put in the lorry, I imagine. I quit concerning myself with that a long time ago. Besides, I don't drive the lorry for the cargo, if you know what I mean. Then it's contraband, Loman. What? Do you want to take an old woman in? Be my guest. Lock me away like bad hand, Hermenegildo. Bad hand? Hermenegildos' bad hand strangled 300 people. What can I say? Some people just really like strangling people. Of course not. To truly understand the Boyadero, you need to listen to on the Western Plain. The Boyadero, Boya for short, is a cow herder from upstream Magritte, the great steppes of northern Mesk. People like Manana at the gates have turned it into an ideology of sorts. It's an old ballad about a young girl who falls in love with a daring boyadero. He promises to marry her as soon as he returns from the western plain. Of course not. The Boyadero returns from the Western Plain, a changed man. One night, as he and his beloved are out walking along the river Madrid, she pleads with him to give up his riding and settle down. In the background, you can hear the orchestra swell as the screen fills with the maiden's imploring eyes. So the boy Adair strangles his beloved and throws her body in the Magrit. Then he rides off, because the Western Plain is calling to him. The most beautiful. A true boy Adair needs a whole horizon to himself. He can be tied down by man or woman. His beloved was selfish. She didn't know what it meant to love a boy Adair. What if? To truly love a boyadero is to float lifeless downstream. She's just a distracted old woman. We should maybe let her get back to her things. So he doesn't think she's a smuggler? You hear that, old man? I don't think your partner likes you spending too much time with me. Oh, don't worry about me. I'm one of the best camioners around. I drive routes no one else will. Lomonosov's land, 
Udajnaya Zemlya, the Western Plain, the Transcadlia Magistral, U418, Adestradas do Mirador, all the good ones, the deep trenches, where the bluebirds fly. You're right, Loman. I'm the one who should take my health more seriously. Thank you for looking out for me. A correct appraisal. You're quite shabby. Is that all you woke me up to say? Now what do you want with an old woman's boots, Sheriff? I'm starting to think you should let me get back to Gabriel Buenguerro. You are no Gabriel. She's wearing sturdy worker's boots, made of black leather. Buckles run across. The sole is also made of leather. Just before Gabriel, it was the coronation of Franco Negro. Now, there was a real man. Moreover, the boots were size 37. Tiny. There are too many discrepancies in all this. Another discrepancy, although not boot-related, is the coronation of His Innocence Franco Negro, which happened 500 years ago. It was. And then it was no more. And I was no longer holding my father's hand. He was no longer descending the stairs in Ryle. The crowd had gone silent. Perhaps it was another Herife who came and woke me up looking at my boots, asking questions? Or uh, perhaps it was one of the others in this carnival? I don't remember. As she says carnival, she gestures to the empty square with the statue and the machines. I could have told you that from just looking at them. The size is 37. The feet of a little girl, they fit well on the pedals. What do I need drugs for, Lohman? What I see, what I feel, the great adversary, no drugs can compare. Yes, there is a protagonista and an adversary. I am on the side of the adversary. There's no coming back from that hole. Those epithets are familiar somehow. The great adversary, the great unrest. Then what were you getting at? This line of questioning is going nowhere. Try harder. Maybe if she thought you're corrupt. Who the fuck is Irrat? Ah, and what do I care about the Union boss? He's no Gabriel. He's no Franco Negro. He's not even Herman Aguildo the Hound. Maybe. Probably not. Makes no difference to me either way. Just this month, I made half a dozen trips from Saramiriza to Grat, and the U-41A. What do you think they take from Saramiriza to Grat, Loman? It's diamonds, Loman, obviously. Easy is the skinny man who thinks he's a poet, never trust a poet. Also, he's the only one I can see from here. That's correct. There is no visibility of any of the others. Diamonds are good for you, Loman. You should try them sometime. Make yourself pretty like Eva de Zoras. Where do you want me to go? This isn't so bad. I can listen to music or the seagulls. Look at all the colors and the features of this world. It's a good palette cleanser, this jamboree. Or I can just relax and let my mind carry me back where it will, to the Great Plains. I think we're done here, no? Yes, go. Enough jamboree. I need to get back to Mesky. Call the Mama Dakwa. It's not only your eardrums that register sound anymore. Your very skin has become an organ of hearing. Looking for a whisper, light and low. A god who's very, very silent. Nothing escapes you. A cockroach in the other room. A candy wrapper falling on dry grass. A drunk 
falling from a chair in a bar 20 meters away. In fact, you haven't heard the call du Mama Dakwa, but you have discovered that you have amazing hearing. It must be the only part of you the alcohol hasn't drowned out. Keep listening. The man is decomposing visibly now. Every hour, he looks less like a creep. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. Your arms reach out and your eyes close, as if by their own volition. It's dark all around. You feel cold, slippery flesh, first with your fingertips, then under the palm of your hand. His face, his cheeks, his nose, his fat, swollen lips. Like a spider, your hand crawls over his features. Everything is silent. They are swollen shut. You need to really push to get in. You're not far. It'll come to you. Keep crawling. The oral cavity is cold and moist. A ball-like tongue attaches itself to the base of the mouth, lolling around like a scallop. You're on the right track. The tongue moves freely in the cavity. The mucus of the mouth is slippery, delicate to touch. From the soft meat, teeth are budding. Hard pearls of bone in the gums and in the back of the mouth. Can you feel it? You're so close. Rip his jaws open now. Look in. A vision of black and dark red death, pried open by your naked hands and studded with teeth. Looks like he's laughing. Death fumes rising from the throat, and there, in the back of his mouth, above the bell of the uvula, right in the soft palate, you see a hole, barely visible to the human eye. It is swollen shut, almost vanished. No larger than 0.4 centimeters in radius, the edges appear darkened. An abrasion collar. This is what we're after. Abrasion collar. Kuno is silent. A black trickle of liquid runs into his throat from the wound. Your index fits right in there. A tight tunnel of flesh opens up, tissue damage, wide enough for two fingers. As you push both in, you reach through his mouth, right into his brain stem. The fuck is happening? Ah, oh, shit, see? The basal ganglia feels clumpy. What entered here has torn apart his reptilian complex. This man will never sleep again, never wake. Your fingers slide into the remains of his limbic system. There is no resistance. It's gelatinous. The slug-like structures are damaged too. The tearing extends deep into both hemispheres. The lieutenant answers with the sound of his pen on paper. Fucking cavity, see? Quivering with awe. Your fingers are all the way in now, reaching toward the inside of his skull. The cavity goes further, but the entry wound isn't wide enough for the rest of your hand to follow. Your fingers reach toward his skull. His cerebral cortex feels like jelly cold jelly. Strange fluid streams down your wrist as you push deeper until you feel it on the tip of your finger. Sharp serrated material, the edges cut right into your skin. Can you, can you get to it? There's a tiny crack, a protrusion in the cranium, right in the back of his head. Your finger must be pointing straight at it, from the inside. 
The object that is in there stopped just short of the skull in the encephalus, knocking this tiny fracture into the cranium. We have the makings of a uh, very small exit wound here. Forget about the fucking exit wound, Beano! The pig is wearing him like a fuck puppet! Her voice is absolutely sizzling with excitement. You pick the object between your index and middle finger. It feels sharp, like metal. With your face twisting from pain and concentration, all you need to do is just... <laughs> My pig's fucking got it? He's watching his old man get the big prize at the claw game. What? What is it? The inside of the head feels cold and smooth like a glove, sweat dripping down your brow. Careful not to lose the prize between your fingers. With a plop, your hand emerges from the mouth, covered in blood up to the wrist. Between your fingers, a small flower, a blossom made of lead. Fucking beautiful! A bullet. The bullet falls in the bag, leaving a smattering of blood on the plastic. He raises the bag under his eyes and says, A non-calibre. Rifle. Some kind of brittle alloy. Fractured on impact. Of course, you've earned it. We need to add an item to the injury list. Injury number four. Oval entry wound with an abrasion collar. Soft palate, back of mouth. High velocity, temporary cavity in brain tissue, small exit wound on the occiput. How does that sound? Opinion, fatal injury. And one last thing. We can now fill in injury number three. Ligament mark. Opinion, non-fatal. Post-mortem, treatment. He's proposing the bullet was the real cause of death, and the hanging an attempt to conceal this fact. Yes, and the belt around his neck, the hanging, even dragging him to the yard. All of it was done after this man was already dead. I have had my doubts since you showed me the tracks. Why did they carry him over? Why not march him, I thought. There was no satisfying explanation. There have been other signs too, small things. We were right not to assign hanging as cause of death, as the perpetrators expected we would. No such luck for We didn't fall for it, he thinks. There's pride in there. There is, of course, the very real possibility he was both shot and hanged. To put him out of his misery? It's possible, but it doesn't explain all the other dubious things here. Lack of struggle, primarily. I may be intellectually sloppy, but I prefer one theory at a time. And this just smacks of treatment to me. That's for us to find out. But this, it will make finding them just a little easier. To hide something. The real killer? The real motivation? What really happened here? Yes, we should take a closer look at it. I am certain it has more to tell us. This little thing could reveal much about the weapon that shot it. Oh, you really, really do. I am glad to hear you say that. Your room in the Whirling in Rags should come with a bathroom. Be sure to make use of it in the evening. We bag the corpse and carry him to the holding pen of my kinema. I can transport him to processing myself, but I will be gone for the rest of the day. Work on the case. Tend to personal matters. Try not to do anything too dangerous. An officer needs backup in a neighborhood like this. I'll leave that choice to you. And one more thing. Great work, detective. The word lingers in the air of the yard. Far away, dogs are barking. Further yet, the sound of motor traffic. Detective.
the bullet is safely sealed away in a plastic bag bearing the RCM stamp. Kim has filled out the label on the bag with the item number, case number, and date and location the bullet was found. Beside his orderly handwriting, the bullet looks especially sad, like a tiny, shriveled head of cauliflower. The squashed bullet has some sharp edges where the jacket has split open. It feels cold, even through the bag. What? Well, if I was the bullet, which I'm not, I would say, find the weapon that shot me. If we find who owns it, we will have likely found who used it, possibly to kill our victim. In conclusion, the more we know about this bullet of yours, the better. The jacket of the bullet is made of a yellowish metal. It has blossomed out to reveal a dark grey core. The base of the bullet is close to five millimeters in diameter. It's quite destroyed. Some of the fragments are still lodged in the wound. You can just about make out a few strations near the base of the bullet. Little hairlines, linear. It feels standard. What can you say about the bullet so far? Yes, it's as if you've seen bullets before, officer. A jacketed bullet. Okay. It would have been shot from a military-grade breech-loading rifle, not from a muzzle loader like those typically found on the streets of Martinez. Even the RCM uses ordinary and jacketed conical bullets. This is strange. Very strange. I like this, officer. Strange means unique. Unique means incriminating. We need to find a gun that shot it. Something tells you that won't be any time soon. This'll have to be one of those epic tasks that's open for a while. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. This is Precinct 57? Yes. The armor was produced by Fairweather in their facilities in Betancourt, sur la clé in 42. It was part of a special order for Corps de Pharmacie, a security firm contracted to protect the interests of Oranis pharmaceutical companies in the Seminine conflict. So, it seems the armor went to Seminine. That's where the paper trail ends, though. Even the firm has proven difficult to track. Corps de Pharmacie has been renamed several times over in the years since the armor was issued. The most recently registered firm that the ICP has been able to connect to the CDP is a military contractor called Crenel. And the one before it was down well. I think they might be the same contractor. A suit of armor like this would have been manufactured with a particular person's physique in mind. You should ask for whom this suit was fitted. Yes, but the ICP tends to be reluctant to share private sector records. I could try to talk them into it, though. This is a fun challenge for her. An opportunity to contribute beyond doing her job by rote. She'll gladly put in the extra effort for Team RCM. Glad to help. Call back tomorrow. Hopefully I'll have more for you then. 57th, over and out. In the cabin, 